Hello, my name is uh, Christian Vass, and I'm a PhD candidate at the Auckland University of Technology, as well as a Commonwealth Scholar, uh, working with the New Zealand Tourism Research Institute in Auckland, New Zealand. And uh, I'm going to be presenting a topic on birdwatching routes as collaborative stakeholdership, looking at local, regional, and national entities. Um, just before I start, I'd like to just uh, describe and define what is birdwatching. Uh, birding or bird watching or twitching or AV tourism or sometimes called ornithological tourism or even ornitholiday is the activity of viewing birds in their natural environment for the purposes of recreation, nature appreciation and education. And this can either be done through the naked eye or through the use of visual enhancing equipment such as binoculars or telescopes. So why is this activity important? Why should we look at bird watching? Why should we study it? Well, bird watching is considered a fast growing segment of nature based tourism, and birding has been identified by some scholars, such as Blondell, as one of the dominant activities in ecotourism. It is estimated that there are 3 million international trips taken annually for the main purposes of bird watching. Uh, bird watchers are also uh, been recorded to have longer stays and spend more than average tours at destinations. And an interesting study from the United States illustrates that an average bird watcher going overseas spent over 4,000 US dollars per trip, excluding flights. So just to give you an example of one of the countries that actually does a good job in tracking bird watching numbers, it is the United States. In the two decades following 1982, the number of bird watchers has risen by 225%. And it's estimated that there are 46 million bird watchers in the US, which is roughly one in five Americans who are believed to be involved in some type of bird watching. These people are also estimated to have a spending of 32 billion in retail sales, which is accounting for 85 billion in overall economic output, which is relatively significant if we consider how niche this activity really is. And as we can see in the United States, there are specific organizations that have emerged, such as the American Birdwatching Association or the Audubon Society, who now tracks birdwatching and has a very active membership uh, number of actual enthusiasts. So how can we attract more birdwatchers? Well, this is one of the key challenges for most tourism planners. Of course, better planning, better collaboration, partnership, and stakeholder cooperation is the obvious answer, but also it is about a deeper understanding of the birdwatching market, as well as visitor desires and profiles, as well as coming up with innovative products. Uh, birdwatching trails are one of these products, and it is estimated that in the United States there are over 50 birdwatching trails in existence. Another innovative product is having birdwatching festivals, and it is also estimated that there are over 240 such festivals that take place annually across the US. In terms of a birdwatching trail, I'd like to just point out when I say birdwatching trail or birdwatching route, what it actually is. A birdwatching trail is a conceptual idea of a mapped out route that connects various birdwatching sites, attractions, and built facilities to make them more accessible to tourists and to encourage the development of an integrated product. This is not to be confused with a physical hiking trail or a bicycle path or a mountaineering track or a walkway. These are more conceptual driving routes. These are um, trails that are more designed to be like itineraries for tourists. And the first such trail was established in 1995, the Great Texas Coastal Birding Trail. And it was designed by a Texas-based ecotourism consultant. Nowadays, such trails have spread across the United States as well as into South Africa and in parts of Asia, such as Malaysia. Just to give you an idea of what actual benefits a birdwatching trail could have, if we compare these two sites that are on the map here, this is Lake Erie, one of the Great Lakes uh, separating Canada and the United States. If we look at the northern destination with the red mark, uh, Point Pelee National Park and the adjacent area, they're estimated to have an economic impact of about 15 million. Whereas on the other side of the lake in the US, uh, McGee Marsh and its associated area is estimated to have 30 million, which is double. And if we look at why this might be the case, one of the main reasons is that the United States 
has developed a very good systematic bird watching trail along the US coast of Lake Erie, whereas no such uh, product exists in Canada, which is one of the major contributing factors why a lot of these bird watching sites are not very visible to tourists in, on the Canadian side of the border. So the research gaps that were tackled with this research was looking at how are bird watching trails actually planned? Who is involved and what type of planning is involved? What stakeholders? Are these private or public or nonprofit stakeholders and do they collaborate? Or which organizations funded such trail development? And also, how do such trails meet operating costs as well as how are they managed? And is there any type of oversight or evaluation in place or monitoring to ensure that they are successful? The methods used in this research was a qualitative approach with 10 in-depth semi-structured interviews, each lasting about an hour with 10 key informants. Usually these are existing tourism trail planners and managers. Five of these were with bird watching trails and five were done with other types of tourism routes such as culinary, cultural heritage, winery, beer, and adventure trails. And this was done in order to compare and contrast between stakeholder collaboration within bird watching trails and to compare them to other types of trails to see if there are any differences or if they're all basically planned the same way. The results indicate that collaboration is a key component of bird watching trail development as most trails are developed in cooperation with federal level agencies, regional, state and provincial as well as local stakeholders. All of these bird watching trails also incorporated public, private, and non-governmental institutions and organizations. And most of these trails were planned, implemented, and managed in collaboration with some of the following agencies, such as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the National Park Service in, in, in Canada, as well as in the U.S., uh, state wildlife conservation agencies, state parks, state departments of transportation, and municipal governments, as well as local uh, interest groups and conservation NGOs. What we see is, of course, the key component of any bird watching trail are the sites along a trail. And most of the important features that are considered is the way that these sites are selected. Sometimes these sites are selected in order to incorporate all possible sites, such as witnessed here with the North Carolina Birding Trail, or at other times it is based on selecting a finite number of the best sites possible. Of course, there are advantages and disadvantages to both, but a major disadvantage of selecting all possible sites is a lot of overlap and designing a trail that is not really feasible in terms of for tourists being able to visit most of the sites or most of the attractions. Rather, it confuses tourists as to what is really out there and what they should actually visit. Another major uh, finding of the research is that most tourism trails are not functioning very well in terms of funding, in terms of being able to meet their own operating costs and most rely on government agencies for continuous funding and for continuous um, finances in order to meet operating costs. This of, of course influences their ability to promote themselves. It also impacts the way they can expand and it also really restricts them in, in terms of having hired staff and also in order to make this tourism trail or bird watching trail into a complete tourism product. Another key component of bird watching trail development and planning is the organization management. Most bird watching trails are collaboratively planned but lack proper organization. So like I said before, they are always planned in collaboration with federal, provincial, state, regional, and local entities. However, oftentimes it is not clear whose role is what or how they should function and who is the leader. At times, there is a steering committee set up of all the entities. And in this case, planning and decision making can be time consuming as well as costly. At the other side of the spectrum, we can have one entity in charge, such as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service or National Park Service. But the issue here is, again, they are not necessarily tourism experts and they are not necessarily designed for tourism. Rather, national parks often also incorporate conservation and preservation as their priorities and not necessarily tourism. 
So in order to look at with this research and these outcomes, what can be done to make to bird watching trails better? Well, bird watching trails need to be planned strategically by professional tourism planners, people that understand what tourism is and what it should be. Because one of the issues with the National Park Service staff planning these types of trails is that they are not always tourism experts. Sometimes they're biologists or ecologists, and they do not have a complete understanding of what a tourism product should have. So a birding route needs to function as a complete tourism product that would incorporate some of the following features. As you can see with this diagram and with this framework put forth, on the outside circle, you can see the involved stakeholders. And these stakeholders are all the ones that I listed previously, but I do believe that a qualified tourism planner should coordinate them. And on the inside, the very inside circle, you can see that the tourism product components should incorporate sites, accommodations, local transportation, information technology, maintenance support, specialized stores, guides, foods, facilities, as well as visitor centers, programs, as well as possibly festivals and events. These are most of these trails that were interviewed lack most of these features as most of them are simply sites along a trail without anything really designed to have been incorporated into the, the making it a full product. So some of the recommendations, well, as I said, most of the bird watching trails that exist are in, the, in North America and specifically in the US, with some being in, in South Africa. And there are no known bird watching trails currently in existence in Europe. But I think there's a good opportunity to develop them. And in order to have some of these stakeholders come together, and I think specifically in the Balkans or in the states of the former Yugoslavia, I think that developing such trails could also promote international cooperation, cross-border um, collaboration, as well as peace and reconciliation for the areas that were previously in war. And it can also provide an added income for these local and transitional economies. So I conducted a web audit, which is basically designed to look at how an activity is performing or how visible it is on the, on, on the World Wide Web. And I looked at bird watching in the various countries of the Balkans and looking at, for example, Slovenia, bird watching does exist on the national tourism website, as you can see from the screenshot. However, there's not much still done in terms of professional planning of how to make this activity more visible to international tourists. In Serbia, it is much the similar case where bird watching does exist on the national tourism organization website but again not much planning has been done in order to really make this activity stand out however in serbia there is uh, an ngo or or a group of enthusiasts uh, called birdwatching serbia that have gone as far as actually identifying some of the major sites for birdwatching in serbia and that can be seen from this map here now these sites are preliminary and they do need more examination as to how suitable they are for tourism. However, um, I think this is a good basis in order to base a trail on. And, and a trail could be de designed based on these sites in order to start linking them together and then potentially linking them with sites in Slovenia or in Croatia. And as you can see in Croatia, a similar organization exists that also educates people and enthusiasts on what type of bird watching exists and what type of sites and species are out there. It is the same situation in Montenegro. However, in Montenegro, birdwatching is really just focused on one location, and that is Lake Skadar, which is the biggest lake in, in the country with, with a large and rich wetland that can allow people to come and see both birds as well as good scenery. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, it is the same case. At, on the national scale and the national website, it doesn't exist. However, there are some tour operators that have started to emerge, as you can see, such as Wild Herzegovina. In the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, this is probably one of the countries that has the least exposure in terms of bird watching, And the only tours that exist are run by foreign companies, such as this one from the Czech Republic. And this is one reason that much more needs to be developed in terms of birdwatching tourism in Macedonia. Now, in Romania, the National Tourism website does have birdwatching listed. And of course, the Danube Delta 
down by the Black Sea is a major bird watching attraction with a lot of rich biodiversity and rich uh, assortment of rare species. In Romania, there's also a local group that also tracks birds and they do keep numbers and it is designed to work a lot similar to the way the American Bird Watching Association does it in the US. In Bulgaria, once again, the national website does have bird watching. So does a group from the UK. There are a number of enthusiasts from the UK that do go bird watching in Bulgaria and have developed this website in order to keep track of species and areas and sites and so on. And this is what I was referring to in terms of bird watching in Bulgaria at the national level. In Albania, bird watching also does not really exist in terms of being organized on a national level. However, there are, again, enthusiasts from the UK that have gone there and have set up websites educating uh, other bird watchers and enthusiasts in order to start developing and start promoting the country. And in Greece, bird watching does exist, but again, nothing on the national level, nothing on the national scale, only on the website of enthusiasts who actually go there for visiting purposes. So in conclusion, few places in Europe offer more diverse habitats, landscapes, and unspoiled nature than the Balkans and the former territories of the former Yugoslavia. There's a need to diversify economies, attract new investment, and new visitors, and birdwatching is a viable option. The Balkans are in close proximity to major birdwatching markets. It is known that people from the UK, the Netherlands, and Scandinavia are usually the biggest markets for birdwatchers from Europe. If a birdwatching trail were to be built, this would be the first of its kind in Europe. And if such a trail was, would transcend international borders, it would also be very unique as none of the birdwatching trails currently in existence are national, usually they're regional, and none transcend international borders. And perhaps the new trail could be called the Great Balkan Birding Trail. So what would be the next steps that would need to be done? Well, as I showed the the preliminary map of birdwatching sites in Serbia is a great start, but a similar tally of interested stakeholders and participants and as well as countries needs to be done in the other countries of the Balkans. And it needs to be done so that conducting an in-depth inventory of sites and supported resources needs to be done. And to gain an inner and intergovernmental as well as EU and various NGO support and possible funding to plan and implement such a trail. I think that this is a viable option that can be done, but at the, at the same time, there needs to be a leader, an organization, or an entrepreneur who takes the lead and starts developing this systematically, step by step. And as I said, starting with an inventory of sites would be a great start. Thank you very much, and uh, if there are any questions or comments, my email address is below. And I could also clarify more of such information for the future. Thank you.